standing in the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy, looking at one of the many portraits by the French woman Elizabeth Louise Vigée Le Brun. This painting looks very calming and soft, with very toned and modest colors. Yes, it is very soft and modest, much like a lot of Elizabeth's other portraits of herself, Marie Antoinette, and many other patrons around Europe. Okay, let's talk about what we see first. Yes, the first thing that pops out to me is the bright red ribbon against a relatively dull background. This is intentional, to draw the audience's eye to her ribbon. Well, we know that she was a court painter for Marie Antoinette, and she was accustomed to the upper class as her father, Louise Vigée, was also a well-known painter. Her clothes are fine, definitely something someone with some wealth and class would wear. Another detail to know is the light source pointing directly at her as she is staring directly at the audience. Yes, and there is definitely a naturalistic approach to the way the shadows are distributed, and there seems to be a lot of detail in her clothes and her hands holding the paintbrushes. Yes, the details are incredible. Her hair looks wispy, her clothes soft, but one thing I am noticing is the lack of details on the portrait that Elizabeth is painting in this work. That portrait is likely of Marie Antoinette, and it does not look very detailed. But in the time of the Revolution, this work was probably meant to reinforce Elizabeth's role as an imperial painter. Definitely. This was in the height of the French Revolution, and all the French court members were being persecuted. By including herself painting Marie Antoinette, Elizabeth was showing her continuing support and sympathy for the French aristocracy, who we have to remember were her primary patrons, friends, and society, even when fleeing France and the persecution therein. In her own memoir, she says regarding that time, I could now paint no longer. My spirit, bruised with so many horrors, shut itself entirely to my art. Besides, dreadful slanders were pouring upon my friends, acquaintances, and myself. Well, let's talk about the young face that is painted here. She's well into her career, as a pa or as a portraitist, and she is depicting herself as this young girl when she is a middle-aged woman. Yes, that was very interesting. If we look at another portrait from 1782, she doesn't seem to have aged at all. I agree. Most of her self-portraits depict her as looking the same throughout her life. Another thing to note is her expression. Yes, it's as if she is briefly looking up at us and smiling as she paints us. She is happy to be painting, and there is also a calmness in her expression. The slight smile and the calmness of her gaze is consistent for all her portraits, which conveys a sense of joy and intimacy. Her calm expression also directly contradicts the violent events of the world around her, though further reinforcing her status as an imperial painter, as mentioned earlier. One detail I find to be quite interesting is the style that this work can be attributed to. We know this was the age of Rococo art, and we see evidence of this portrait being Rococo with the overall softness, like the soft illumination of her face caused by the lack of harsh contouring lines and the use of a more pastel color palette. And there is attention drawn to her apparel, the details and the ruffles of her dress and the shine of her sash. But Elizabeth was known for not only Rococo art, but also neoclassical and romantic art as well. Her references to classical Greece are seen in a number of her later paintings, and her role in the Romanticism movement is evident here as well. This work also does not include the extreme luxury and decadence, even gaudiness, or the playful elements seen in typical Rococo art. That is true. However, I would not consider this particular portrait romantic. She is modest, relaxed, and content. This portrait lacks the drama and the impelling passion that you would normally identify in romantic paintings. Yes, this work is definitely in the Rococo style, maybe late Rococo during a transition to Romantic art. Agree to disagree. Moving on, let's talk about the circumstances in which she made this work. Yes, Elizabeth went into the Royal Academy in Paris as one of four women accepted and emerged as the leading royal artist um, under Marie Antoinette. During the Revolution, she was exiled from France and lived in all corners of Europe, emulating the works of Rubens and Raphael in her art, who were her biggest inspirations. Yes, and many of her works, like the portrait of her and her daughter together, resemble that of the Madonna and Child by Raphael very closely. The compositions are nearly identical. Even while living in such a tumultuous time, when luxury and wealth were flaunted, her work depicts a sense of vanitas, showing a sense of modesty and humility. This is achieved through the dark, almost somber tones, but she also gives credit to Marie Antoinette as her patron and supporter even though Marie was hated by the French people during the Revolution. 
In the context of the late 1700s in France, it is imperative to recognize Elizabeth Louis, Louise Vigée Lebrun, when talking about the art of the time, and this specific work does a great job of demonstrating that.